In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer to create these simple, stylish letter designs that can be used independently as logos, icons, or whatever else you'd like. So I'll come over into a new document and get started. The first thing I want to do is enable snapping. So I'll come up here to the toolbar and click on this magnet icon to enable snapping. And then I'm going to grab my circles tool and I'm going to click and drag to create a circle. And I'm going to hold the shift key while I do that to ensure that, that it is a perfectly round circle. And then I'll make this circle black and I want to bring down the opacity roughly halfway, about 50% so that we can see through it with other objects that we're going to create. And I'm going to grab my selection tool now, and I'm just going to place this in the center of the page until it snaps like that. And then I'll come over here to the layer menu. I'll right click the layer and go to duplicate. And I'm going to hold the shift and command key, or if you're using Windows, it would be shift and control. And just click and drag to scale this circle down roughly about halfway, give or take. And now I'm going to duplicate that again. So let me right click on that circle and go to duplicate. And I'm going to hold my shift key and take this node up top and click and drag until it snaps to the top of the larger circle. So let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool now and I'm going to snap the cursor to the right side of the smaller circle and I'll click and drag and then bring the rectangle down here until it snaps to the bottom and right side of the larger circle like that. So I'll grab my corners tool now. And I'm going to take this node right here and just bring this all the way in so that it, it's all the way rounded like that. And then I will go to Layer and I will select Convert to Curves. So now I'm going to grab the Selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over everything to select everything here. And now I will go to the Shape Builder tool, which is located over here in the toolbar. And let me zoom in on this a little bit so I can see it better. I'm going to select the Addition option up here in the toolbar. And I'm going to click and drag a line going through these parts of the shape right here so that this all becomes one shape. And then I'll come down here and click a line, click and drag a line going through these two shapes right here so that becomes one single shape. And now we have two separate shapes right here. Now I'm going to enable the subtraction setting and I'm going to click on the circle in the center to subtract it. And then I will click on it again to subtract it again. And if we go back to our selection tool, you can see now we have two separate shapes here. So let me bring the opacity of these all the way back up. I'll click off of it to deselect everything. And then I'm going to select just this shape right here. And I'm going to color this in with a gradient. But first, I'm going to pick a color to use for the gradient. So I'm going to choose a shade of red, maybe with a little bit of pink in it towards the pinkish side. And then I'm going to grab my gradient tool, which is located underneath here. If you hold a click over this tool, you can see the gradient tool right there and select that. Or you can just press the letter G on your keyboard. And then I will come up here to the type drop down and I will choose linear. I'm going to click on this stop right here, this end of the gradient to select it. And I'll make this side a shade of yellow, like a lighter shade of yellow. And then I want to copy this. So let's right click the layer and go to copy. And then I'm going to click on the other shape to select that. And then I will go to edit and select paste style to give it that gradient as well. But I want to flip the gradient around. So I'm going to come up here to this icon that says reverse gradient when you hover your cursor over it and click on that. And that'll reverse the gradient around like that. And now you can see we already have a letter design here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow in there just to give it a little bit of depth. So let me come back in here. I'm going to grab my circle tool now. I'm going to snap to the bottom center of the hole in the middle of the letter here and then click and drag and then hold the shift key and bring this all the way up until it snaps to the top of the larger circle and then release it right there. And I will make this object black. I'll bring its opacity down in half and I'm going to grab the selection tool and I'm going to move this to the center. I want to snap this to the center of the hole in the middle of the letter there. Then I will come over to the layers menu right click on that circle and go to duplicate and then hold the shift key and grab this bottom left corner and then just scale this down about that much. It should, it should snap right about there. What I'm looking at right here is the intersecting area between these two shapes. I want about this much space between them, give or take. And then I'll hold shift and click on the other circle so that I have both of those circles selected. And then I'll come up here to the Boolean operations and I will select the subtract option and it'll subtract the two shapes from each other. Then I'm going to hold the shift key and click on this shape right here so that we have both of those selected. And now it's time to go back to the shape builder tool. You should still have subtract selected there. If not, make sure you enable that. 
And I'm just going to click on this shape right here to subtract that shape. And now we can go to the selection tool, click off of it to deselect everything. And then we're going to get rid of this little piece right here. So let me click on this shape to select it. I'll grab the nodes tool and I'll click and drag over these nodes of this part of the shape right here. And then just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And now we can grab the selection tool and adjust the opacity of that shape accordingly. Uh, you may want it darker or lighter depending on your own preferences. I like how it looks right about, right about there. So I'm going to leave it there and then I'll zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, just like that, we have a lowercase letter A. And this letter can be duplicated and used to create many other letters. So let me show you as an example. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to hold the shift key, move it over here. I'm going to make a duplicate of this. I'm going to hold the alt key or option if you're on Mac and just click and drag to create a copy. I'm going to hold the shift key as well to lock it onto the horizontal axis. And let's say we wanted to make this one into a letter B. All we have to do is flip it vertically and horizontally click off of it to deselect everything. And we just have to make this part of the letter a little taller. So I'm going to grab the nodes tool, click on this shape right here, and I'm going to select just these three nodes up top and then click and drag them up like this. So I'm going to hold the shift key while I do this to lock it onto the vertical axis and I'll bring them up to about here. And just like that, we have a letter B, although this shape right here is sticking out over the top. So I'm going to click on that shape and I'm just going to lower it down by holding command and pressing the left bracket key a few times or you could just manually click and drag it down in the layers menu. If you're using Windows, it would be the control key. So you press control in the left bracket key. And now we have a letter B. So to create the letter C, we'll have to be a little more imaginative. So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna click and drag over this letter A, and I'm gonna duplicate this by holding option and clicking and dragging it over, or it would be the alt key if you're on Windows. And let's make this into a letter C. So I'm gonna zoom in on this. I'm gonna select this shape, I'll go to the nodes tool and I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes right here to select them. And I'll come up here to the tool settings menu and I'm looking for this option up here that says break curves. And when I click on that, it's going to break it into separate shapes. And now we can deselect everything and just take this shape and get rid of it. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to select this shape, go to the nodes tool, select these two nodes, and I will break those apart as well. And I can take my select tool now and just get rid of that one shape. So we have a letter C shape, but it's not quite wide enough to be a letter C. So let me grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to snap to this bottom edge right here and click and drag up like that and create a rectangle just to elongate this C to make it look a little better. And then I'll grab my selection tool and I'll duplicate this down here. So I'm going to hold the option key or alt if you're on Windows, click and drag this down and then snap this right here. And then I'll select this shape. I'll hold shift, click on the shape next to it and I will add them together using the Boolean operations. And now I'll do the same thing down here. I'll take this shape, hold shift, click on the shape next to it, add them together. And now we can just go to our corners tool and take this node and just bring that in. Let me try that again. Bring that in like that so it's rounded and do the same thing over here. Bring that in so it's rounded. And there we go. I'm gonna click on bake appearance to finalize that. And I'll do the same thing over here. Click on that and bake appearance isn't in the tool menu here. So I'll just go to layer and select convert to curves. And now we have a letter C. So as I'm sure you can see, you can use this method to create uh, the rest of the letters of the alphabet. For example, I'm gonna create a letter D really quickly. I'm just gonna make a duplicate of this one and then just flip it horizontally. And there we have a letter D. So at this point, I'm sure you get the idea. You'll have to use a little bit of an imagination to create uh, letters like X or Z or the letter E or whatever, but this is just a general guideline to get you started. Uh, that's how you can go about creating these simple and stylish letter designs using Affinity Designer. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.